Now back to Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. And welcome back to Inside West Virginia Politics. We're going to be talking more about bills the governor signed and the governor vetoed. But first, we want to talk about a sports betting problem here in the state of West Virginia. Joining, from the, joining us from the studios of our affiliate WTRF Channel 7 in Wheeling is Delegate Sean Fluharty, Democrat, Ohio County. Uh, Sean, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me, Mark. How you doing? Good. Well, we, we, you were the author of the sports betting bill in this state, so we want the expert on the subject. Sports betting is down, at least on the mobile app in, in West Virginia right now. Uh, right in the middle of March Madness, the state's losing revenue. The casinos are probably losing revenue. What caused this to happen, and how do we fix it? Oh, well, you're right, Mark. The timing could not have been worse for this to happen. And it looks like there's a contract dispute between vendors that are associated with sports betting and especially the mobile app. So right now in Wheeling and Charleston, we're down completely brick and mortar wise and also our mobile betting app, which is the only one in the state, is down. So in the prime betting season when everybody wants to come to West Virginia and visit our state, enjoy what we have and, and enjoy our sports betting program, they're unable to do so. And it's extremely frustrating as a lawmaker because I believe there should have been more transparency in what's going on and they've kind of uh, really dropped the ball on allowing us to understand what exactly is happening. But my understanding right now, Mark, is there's a contract dispute between Miomni, Intergaming, and Delaware North. Those are the three parties involved, and it's a, an IP dispute on intellectual property issues on the software being used. Yeah, that's, uh, we should point out that uh, Delaware North is the parent company that owns the Mardi Gras Casino here just outside of Charleston and also Wheeling Island up in the northern panhandle. I mean, to the average person, they don't get all the legalities and technicalities of this. They must be horribly frustrated. And, of course, we had people coming in from out of state to participate in sports betting since we were one of the first states. Right. Any idea what this is going to do to our revenue and um, revenue estimates that we were hoping to get, especially in a season like March Madness? Well, I think with the slow rollout during football season, we didn't take advantage of that. Basically, nothing left for March Madness other than a few areas of the state. It's going to kill our revenue numbers, and our projections are going to be much higher than what our actual revenue numbers are. And here we are. Uh, we're down since early March. We're approaching April. Uh, key betting time of the year, the, probably the highest of the year, and yet we're not really getting answers as to what's going on and when we're going to be back up and running. And that, for me, is the most frustrating part. I believe everybody needs to understand what's going on, and they've kind of hidden that from us. And as a lawmaker who worked so hard to get this done and has been transparent through the whole process, put together a great bill that other states are modeling their, their legislation after, it's one of those things where the legislation got, got it right. You know, Mark, usually the legislature does a poor job at things. And we actually got this right, and now, out of our hands, other people are, are uh, messing with it and making us look bad, and that's not something that I'm a fan of. All right, let's talk about another piece of legislation that a lot of people think you guys got right that the governor vetoed, and that was the Medical Marijuana Vertical Integration Bill. And let me just give a quick explanation. What this bill would allow is that if a company came in and they wanted to be a, a marijuana grower, a processor, and a vendor that opened up the dispensaries, they could do all three functions. That was prohibited in the original bill. Uh, what are your concerns about the governor vetoing this bill and its impact? You know, I'm frustrated that the governor comes in at the 11th hour. He's been absent all session. We haven't heard from him, the absentee governor that we have. And at the 11th hour, he vetoes legislation that was critical to implementing our medical cannabis program. It's absolutely necessary that we get this legislation passed if we're going to have a, a, a program up and running for patients here in West Virginia. Our veterans deserve it. Our cancer patients deserve it. They've been waiting far too long. And now our governor comes in at the 11th hour and changes everything. This will push our program off for at least another year, most likely. Because you're not going to have, as you said, Mark, companies investing. That's what has to take place for our program to get up and running. And we always talk about bringing in business to West Virginia. What he did last night will prevent businesses from coming here. It will prevent us collecting revenue. It will also prevent patients from getting the, the medical help they need and desire. And it's something we've been working on for a good while. And to have the governor come in and do this without any real explanation, he didn't come during session and say, hey, this piece of legislation you're working on, that's very important to a lot of West Virginians. It needs a couple tweaks. He didn't do that. Where was he all session? We don't even know. But he shows up and vetoes the bill at the 11th hour, and that's just something that, as a lawmaker, I can't stand. And every West Virginian should be frustrated with our governor right now for, for doing that to our citizens of West Virginia. Delegate, I only have 30 seconds left, so briefly, your thoughts on his veto of Randy's dream, the roads bill, and what do we need to do to get roads fixed in this state? First thing we need to do is start listening to DOH members. You know, the governor held a press conference last week. He had them drive in from all over the state for a 16-minute meeting where he talked about himself. 
He needs to start listening to those on the front lines, and they will tell you, we need more people and manpower, and we're not paying them enough to keep them. And when you don't have that going on, you can't get projects done. That's exactly what's happening here in West Virginia right now. All right, we want to thank Delegate Sean Fluharty for joining us from our station, Channel 7, WTRF in Wheeling. We should mention that Sean has a radio show every week on WKKX, 1600 AM and online. That's on Wednesdays from noon until 2 PM. Thanks for being with us, Delegate. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate your time. And we're going to have more of Inside West Virginia politics, including more on the roads discussion after this break.